Hi kids, welcome to today's story. Because we're learning all about jungle animals, we're reading a very inspiring story about one of them. The name of our story is called Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andreas, illustrated by Guy Parker Reese. Let's get ready. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots of trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold a jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. Jungle dance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald was so sad because when he came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chumps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel. And eight baboons teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor. But the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald. You're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They write, he thought, I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off the dance floor and started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. <coughs> Excuse me, coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling and making circles in the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing around. He threw his arms out sidewards and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Cheryl felt so wonderful his mouth was wide open. I'm dancing. Yes, I'm dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then, one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while, Ger while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer we'd ever, ever seen. How'd you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find when we find music that we love. The end. Isn't that a wonderful, inspiring story? So what happened to Gerald was, 
when he heard the right song, he had the feeling, which is called inspiration, that made him want to dance. So everybody can have different types of inspiration and different things that they like. That's what makes us all unique and different. I hope you enjoyed the story. I enjoyed reading it to you. Bye.